What is up, down, and sideways, you beautiful individuals? Welcome back inside League Online. Eric and Mark here with you guys as we had to wait 10 days, basically. But we've got games on the rift. The summer split kicking off and the brand new format of the LPL. And I know we talked about stale metas at times. Honestly, the majority of the spring split, it felt like it was just a carryover from 2023, but I got a pretty damn good feeling about 2024 summer because we're already seeing a little bit of spice in the LPL. Take it to the bank. Take it to the bank, my man, and cash it in right now because Fearless Draft already providing the stipend to you and your feelings of seeing some new champions out there on the rift. It's not the full-blown level yet, and I think we're going to have a conversation about what the full-blown level of Fearless Draft can lead to. But right now, early indications in the LPL, I feel like we got the stove on. We got the heat on. We are about to get some cooked meals fresh out of this league. Best matchup and most exciting series of the debut weekend in the LPL. Absolutely the Ninjas in Pajamas versus Weibo Gaming because... Ah, there were some great highlights, great team fighting, and some egregious calls throughout the series. Uh, game one, NIP full control the entire time until two fights in a row. They try and close out the game. They try and do just the bum rush, go to the Nexus, and we can kill it. And in one fell swoop, Weibo steals game one from the jaws of defeat. Oh, man. I th This is one of those ones where you have to say, if you see anything like this... Two, three months from now, you've got major questions about a squad type of situation. But one of those ones where you maybe discreetly sweep it in under the rug, put it into the corner when you're looking at the first weekend and you can move by it. Going to be a tough one to, to forget about when you see a couple of these plays because, yes, NIP is gambling out there in that first game, taking the team fight and saying, you know what? That wasn't the problem. We got this. We're going to execute. We're going to run it back in this next fight five minutes later. It was not good, and it was absolutely the end. And um, obviously, a bit of mental fortitude as they bounce back in this series. They have a pretty good game, too. This series, especially games two and three, rookie, absolutely. Having Zhao Hu's number in the head-to-head, -head, he gets the game-clinching solo kill on his LeBlanc with the Oriana play in game two, and then... In the third game, he has a pretty immaculate, quirky performance. But even in the third game, NIP try their best to completely throw the game again at Baron as both smites go down. Rookie somehow gets the Baron kill on Corky, but NIP almost gets wiped. But, uh, what is this Baron flip action going on in the LTL? NIP gambling on it. Either way. They find a way to get through this series, get through this game is the important thing to look at for them. I don't think I don't think anyone is saying and coming out of this series feeling mega hot about either of these teams. I think the one thing to keep track of coming out of this one for me was the performance of Rookie and how he looked and how strong he was playing. A kind of, you know, one of these reassurance type of things where it's still, yes, remembering NIP all the way through the spring split and talking about, you know, fraud for real, what it was. I think a lot of the things that you could identify that was for real about that team was rookie playing towards that elite level once again, trying to rise up and whether the rest of the team was going to be there was the question. Saw in spring, answer was real, was not necessarily enough compared to the top level teams in the LPL. Indication here early in this summer split is a little bit of the same, but still getting that thumbs up on Rookie is at that very least that assurance that you're going to be in the picture. You're going to be in this conversation for some of these dark horse, all that type of stuff, things. It's going to be all about fearless draft, and can you master it early to get these points, I think. And for the Weibo side of things, obviously we got the debut of both Breed and Tarzan coming into the squad. We got the Nidalee coming out uh, for Mr. WBG, now Tarzan, and they were quickly back on the rift. They got a bit of redemption, another three-game set, but they get it done in convincing fashion in both games two and three against what is a struggling looking IG squad but uh, obviously not much to go off of in terms of uh, Tarzan and Breed making their debuts but we know carry top laners are looking like they're going to be in the meta two Nidalee games for Tarzan but we also saw him on some supportive champions like the Ivern and Sichuan. 
this is one of those rosters that you're gonna have to check in with on you know week three week four what is it gonna be because you need to see that progression from this point on with Weibo because when you're talking about players like Tarzan like breathe you gotta understand yes they're fantastic yes they're carrying these things that you know and expect about these players entering into a new environment entering into a new environment needing to hit the ground running in summer and find success for this Weibo team that is going to be the question mark i think for me and whether this experiment works out we know these players can be impactful someone like tarzan playing with Shao, who getting advantages going to the bot lane that can be a major thing for Weibo. and then as well in that top side Breathe. He's someone that we have not seen enough of in the last year or two, I think, given obviously the situation that was with RNG and what type of player he can be and how impactful he can be on these top lane carries. You're right to point that one out. I think that is the big thing to look at with this Weibo team as we move into some of these more important matches. And real quick, because the Breathe to RNG connection, RNG debuted against World Elite and looked absolutely abysmal with the new lineup Juan Fang coming in and the absolute fall from grace for RNG who are back-to-back -back MSI champions they're now iconic players since Uzi retired Zhao Hu leaves and makes the world finals immediately in his first team a uh, year away from the squad I heard someone compare RNG to the TSM of the LPL and honestly seems pretty accurate you're the most iconic team with the most iconic player and then your fall from grace from shady moves from management and all of a sudden you're fading into obscurity uh, real quick oh man it is an absolute tragedy going on to see the rng organization in this type of state and what has happened and i say tragedy from the fan perspective because i know there's a lot of things going on a lot of shy, a little bit of shady things going on as well that you can dive into and none of it is ending up too good for the players or for the fans in the situation when you're looking at it, at it from the LPL. You look at the game they played, uh, man, you wish that you were watching a TSM game, seeing how that RNG was played, because, man, it was not pretty whatsoever. They clearly are a squad looking out of the water, and one of the worst things about it is your boy Ming hanging down in the bottom lane. He's not having a good time, and I don't think any... And I, you know, it's one of those ones where the environment's not good, but the performance isn't any good either, my man. We used to talk about, is it Mako or Ming for the GOAT LPL support? Uh, it's not so much of an argument anymore as Mako obviously completely ran away with that title. We always talk about the MSI hangover when we come back into the summer split. But luckily, Top Esports, they were bounced pretty early in the tournament. So they didn't have to deal with any of the hangover. They're... You know, it was a local tourney for them because they came back business as usual against Rare Adam. A slower paced game one, but by game two, they're absolutely obliterating in 21 minutes. We got to see 369 on Mordekaiser and a Jackie Love Ziggs game in the second match. And damn, he looked comfortable on that pick. Oh, um, man. I. You it's so tough because I want to go full board and be hyped and be excited about the Jackie Love Ziggs pick because you're right. It looked relatively comfortable out there. Certainly plenty of damage for the side of top esports coming through from the Ziggs pick. The question for me is going to be, are you comfortable with him playing this against some of the more lethal, some of the more aggressive uh, squads that you might run up against in the LPL and knowing that not necessarily the champion that I'm super confident with Jackie on, but you bring up performances like this, you can build up that level of confidence. And that's one of those things. You mentioned the hangover from MSI. I don't think uh, Top Esports was not at the bar long enough to pick up a hangover the next day, unfortunately. But they are back at it in this summer split and they are ready to go for it. And they've got their goals. They've got their set to see where they can improve and say that, you know what? Just being elite, just being a top level team, that's not enough. We need to be the best team in the region is going to be that benchmark now that they have aimed for. And listen, despite having a lackluster end to their run at MSI, I think one of the big things to take from that tournament was some of the individual performances out of Kree because he was hard carrying some of these games for TES at MSI and he immediately comes back, plays the Way and the Corky. He has two solid games. If you're talking about him playing at an all pro level in terms of LPL mid lane as well, that's the final domino to fall for TES to be title. I'm not going to say favorites because there's a BLG squad, but right there behind them. 
he nailed it, man. If they've gotten cream to get to that next level, he starts to continue to improve. One of the things we always talked about with the OMG team, about him being that prospect, being that potential type of player, showing the signs of it, cashing in on a little bit here with top esports and being, you know, relatively looking kind of that impressive star heading out of what was a mediocre MSI. This is the top esports that you want to be seeing in summer split, that you want to be challenging a squad like BLG. Uh, you know, can't forget about JDG. You know that they're going to be around in this type of picture. These performances, this type of level from Cream is that thing that can push your confidence on a top esports into that level of saying they are the competition. They are the top level team of the LPL. And obviously, changes to the meta as well. Can we get Jackie Love on more hyper carry champions, or is he going to be on Senna Ziggs duty for a whole split? What is this with fearless draft and pushing into some like strange type of ideas for some champions and some players that we feel like they're going to go this direction, and they absolutely do not type of thing. Yes, bring us bring us a healthy diet of some more mega carries for your boy Jackie Love right now in this summer split. But the level a guy like Crib is hoping to get to is a vintage level out of somebody like Mr. Scout, a multi-MVP winner in the LPL, incredibly heavily criticized, warranted at times throughout the spring split. But this series, uh, immaculate performance against OMG, Cream's former squad, and especially this game to LeBlanc. He goes 8, 2, and 12, 20 out of the 22 kills he participated in, but this is one of the biggest 1v9 individual games I've seen out of him in his whole LPL career. Look, we got to see a Skarner in this one, in yeah. the top side. Is he was there. Back up. He certainly was there. I saw him a couple of times on the screen when I was watching Scout Pop. He knocked some people into a wall. Okay. Did, 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 a, did a couple things. Took a little bit to recognize. Number one was the Skarner. It's a weird looking side. champion portrait. I thought I think it's three or four other champions before I'm thinking it's Skarner. Uh, but it, it was a good performance, nonetheless. Clean all the way through from this one from Ellen. Dad. Maybe not fully clean all the way through, but clean enough. Is they don't I'm do doing. clean. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Clean enough is the way that you got to grade this one for LNG. And this is an LNG that needs to improve, needs to impress in this summer split compared to what we did see throughout that spring split. And one of the big ones you needed and you didn't really get quite enough of a dosage of, you were left with a very lean looking plate, were scout MVP level performances. And that's exactly what you got a healthy serving of in this game. I think you got double servings. You went up for seconds in this one and those seconds man you even got dessert on the side with the way that leblanc game went for lng and obviously yeah they, they didn't win a single series they lost to weibo in that second round in the spring split so championship point wise they need a really solid run in this summer split in this new fan format maybe warming up against some of these weaker teams potentially uh, i think top esports is in their group so not a weak team there but all you got to do is finish top two to get to that top side. So fully expect LNG to the, be the favorites to be finishing second there, especially when, as we just mentioned, Scout is playing at the level that he is in the very first uh, series of the summer split. But early signs. We only got three days of LPL games, so we're completely overreacting. But that's the nature of what you do in the summer split. The meta is looking spicy, and I don't think it's just fearless draft because some of these picks were coming in game one of the series again three days in here's some of the picks we're already getting we've seen the skarner top a couple of times we've seen the mordekaiser top as a kind of counter into that we're seeing camille talia jungle it's been a while since we've seen her in the jungle she's been a mid lane staple pick we've seen graves jungle lilia jungle Jin 80 carry zigspot jinxbot and pike all in just the first three days, Mark? Fearless draft on top. Let's go. Yes, this is the draft. This is the meta that we are seeing emerge from the LPL with Fearless Draft. And I think you're right to call out right away that we are seeing teams be more experimental right out of the gate, even in game one. And I think part of that, yes, could be the actual meta and what is going to develop into that very tippity top front of the spear, number one pick type of situation. But I also think it's teams identifying we can't go 100% in game one. We got to maybe go 95, 
or a 90, 92%, find a, an avenue in that number that is competitive, that is strong with keeping that 100% comp locked in for game two, a game three, or whatever type of situation. They're playing how they want to do that. That's a possibility when you're weighing how things are going. And I think a couple of these ones, we're still getting enough variety in these games without even fully pushing to game threes. Because if you look at the game threes, I think that's where it really starts to tip over. Game one, game two, maybe we get a 90% same draft, an 80% same draft. Game three, you're really starting to hit the 75s. You're hitting those 60s. And you're starting to really notice some of these changes to either some of the, where the players are playing or where the, some, of the, uh, some of these champions are finding themselves into is one of the things that I think this fearless draft can lead to. I mean, 15 champions being gone when you take to account the 10 you've picked in the first two games and then obviously the five you get to ban. There's major tournaments where you're talking about 15 champions are picked like 80% more than anyone else in the game. So that can be your entire first phase or your S tier picks all gone by the time you're heading into game three. And absolutely, I think it's a strategy to go, oh, we got to win on Ziggs in game one. Now we're wide open for the rest of the series with 80 carry picks. Exactly. You can set yourself up for the knockout type of punch uh, thing. Or you go, hey, we need that all in front. We need to have that early advantage. We need to have that edge of 1-0 into that next game. Go full beans. Take the full meta. Take that pick. Take this. All these things that we can see from Fearless Draft. Now, one of the important things we did want to talk about quickly is mentioning that, yes, Fearless Draft has been wonderful, and we've seen these picks come through. What does it mean as you keep going down this path of Fearless Draft? What does it mean when you start getting towards best of fives, playoff series, where you are bringing this in? It's one of those things where, yes, you want to go full beans. You want to go full pedal down, but you got to realize what type of situation, what world that's creating. Because for some people, there's some alarms going off when you enter into a best of five, and they start realizing... One, two, three, four. They start adding up how many picks are going to be banned out at that point. It's something like 40 picks that are going to be gone from the table in a game five. And that's when you get into every region needs to be on the same page. They've all got to be playing the same format when you're leveling up for these international events. And Cajal mentioned those exact game fives a little bit. He was talking about saying, when you are 40 champions deep. Now, first off, there's 170 champions in the game. So if there's not... 60 viable champions out of 170 well that's a that's a riot issue that we need sorting out at that point but i get game five champion uh, teams haven't gone that deep that's so much extra work to be able to play 50 60 champions in a team comp so a couple things kedro mentioned was either getting a full reset in game five if you're doing fearless where everything's available now or the old school ogn fans will love it Blind pick WTF two shens. I would love to have these one v ones because the most iconic play in the history of the game is from blind pick the one v one faker set. After all this time, we return back to blind pick. Holy cow! These are some interesting options when you talk about how do you want to uh, uh, tweak. How would you adjust something like fearless draft to put something through like this? Number one, the one that was laid out, of course, as the full reset is pretty wild because you're going one of these things of, yes, you're taking them out, taking them out, and then you're going, yep, full board, clean board, play it to the max. What do you got in that game five? Uh, you're going to get situations where all of a sudden one team goes, hey, you know, we want that OP pick in game one, and the other team took OP pick in game two, and they blew him out of the water in those games because that pick is so OP. Who's going to get it in game five type of situation with the board wiped clean is one of the ones that you could see. And then as you laid out already, blind pick, the old guys like us, the boomers, you know, blind pick, you've been there. Even the zoomers, you've created a new account. You've been thrust in to blind pick. Everybody in League of Legends knows blind pick and everybody knows blind pick and getting your 1v1 against the same champion Baker, what was that? It is the most iconic play of all time. And I think we have been denied these type of moments, these type of matchups for far too long on the professional stage. And I know it seems a little extreme to be talking about these game five scenarios when we only have 
one round of Fearless in the LPL. Remember, the next round it's going away from it. But I really feel like the testing here, we've heard the LCK has been considering it. The NACL this year is already going to be playing Fearless. I'm fully expecting, maybe even by 2025, that most of these major regions are going to have at least some aspect of Fearless in their new formats. I think everybody wants in on this new hotness that is going to be Fearless Draft. And I also think a lot of these regions, a lot of the fans are realizing the type of shakeup, the type of variety that it will provide in your games, in your need and your ability to adapt on the fly in game. Three games, three days of LPL have already shown that. Yes, it's, it has been the smallest you know, the little sample spoon you get at the ice cream parlor, it's one of those of Fearless Draft, but I'm telling you, that is the richest, tastiest ice cream that you're getting right now for the summer treat. I want six pints of that Fearless Draft <laughs> coming through uh, for the next, because I feel like that has the, obviously we'll have to see how this plays out, but that might even have the potential to close the gap to some of these Western or Eastern teams versus the West, it'll either do that or it's an added level of strategy and it'll level them up even further because the LCK and LPL could probably play 70 champions. Oh, I'm sure they can play 70 champions, but when you start getting down into those type of lists, you start having to change things up and up. Cheese and identity can come through. That's the big one. Malphite, you know what Amumu, I Blitzcrank, comps. Here they go. Yeah. You can look at it one direction and go, yes, yeah, sure, you can be good at everything. You got to realize, well, that is a limit because no matter, it's either going to be the limit on how good you are or how many things you can have, be good at type of situation, uh, one of those ones. But you can't specialize in that identity if you are one of these other regions identifying and going, hey, these guys might be able to pivot to these type of things. They might have this whole wide open field, but nobody's better at us than running on a dirt road type of situation. That's the type of thing you got to figure out if you're one of these teams and fearless draft could be the path for that avenue the problem is riot has to get all these regions and the international events on the <laughs> same page but i think it's going to happen faster than we expect that it becomes the new norm to be talking about fearless draft on the pro scene but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people as always thanks for hanging and we will catch you 